Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we're delving into the world of heat treatment. Whether you're a welding enthusiast, a materials engineer or just curious about how weld metals are treated, this is for you. So let's get started. So why do we heat treat steels? First up, let's talk about increasing strength. Heat treatment processes like quenching and tempering can significantly increase the strength of steel. This makes it suitable for high stress applications, such as in construction and use in machinery. Right? Next, we have enhancing hardness values. Processes like hardening involve heating the steel to a high temperature and then rapidly cooling it. This increases the hardness of the steel, making it more wear resistant and perfect for things like cutting tools and other applications where surface hardness is critical. Tempering is another important process that involves heating the steel to a temperature below its critical point and then cooling it. The main goal is to reduce brittleness while maintaining an acceptable level of hardness. This makes the steel more durable and less prone to cracking. Relieving the stress, internal stresses is critical as we talk about things like distortion. So processes like annealing and stress relieving help to reduce internal stresses that can cause distortion, warping or cracking. This is important for maintaining the dimensional stability and integrity of steel components. Reducing residual stress can also improve fatigue life because there's less built-in stress that stops peaks uh, hitting the yield strength of that material. We also have enhancing ductility. Annealing and normalizing processes increase the ductility of steel, making it more pliable and easier to work with. This is particularly useful for forming and shaping operations. You know, have, you, have you ever taken a material and tried to bend it and found it just cracks? Well, taking it through an annealing or normalizing process will allow that to have more ductility and easier to form. Finally, heat treating steels allows us to tailor their properties to specific applications. Uh, all of the heat treatment processes we've very quickly touched upon in this opening can be used to meet specific needs. So we can take a baseline steel and the different way in which we heat treat it will create different mechanical properties for use whether that be in automotive parts, aerospace, uh, industrial machinery, like we said, construction, the, the list goes on. And it allows us to play and just make those steels worth using. First up, we have stress relieving. This process involves heating a welded component up to a temperature of between 5 and 700 degrees, holding it there and then cooling it slowly. The goal is to reduce residual stresses, which then cause distortion, warping and cracking. Stress relieving improves toughness, dimensional stability and corrosion resistance and extends the life of in-service components.
Normalizing is used to refine the grain structure and improve mechanical properties. It also reveal uh, normalizing is used to refine the grain structure, improve mechanical properties, and relieve internal stresses. The process involves heating the metal to a temperature between 800 and 950 degrees, holding it and then cooling it in still air. This results in a more uniform and finer grain structure. So what we're doing here is trying to get the material back to like it was before we welded it. In other words, normalize. This enhances toughness and ductility of the material. Now let's talk about annealing. This heat treatment process is used to increase ductility, relieve internal stresses, and refine the grain structure of the material. By heating the material to a temperature between seven and 900 degrees, holding it, and then cooling it slowly, we improve its machinability and its mechanical properties. Quenching is our next one, and in simple terms, quenching is a heat treatment process that uses rapid cooling of a workpiece from high temperature, and it increases hardness and strength, but it also increases brittleness of the component. So how does it work? Well, first we heat the steel to a very high temperature, and then we cool it quickly using a quenching medium. Uh, so there's three main quenching mediums, and they are water, oil, and air. And they work differently to cool the part at different levels. So water provides the fastest cooling rate, but can cause cracking because of the thermal stress. So if the outside of the part cools much faster than the inside, then you get that thermal stress buildup, which can cause cracks. So to get around that and reduce the risk of cracking, we tend to use oil. So again, we'll heat it up to the high temperature, then drop it into oil, and that should increase its hardness, but reduce the risk of cracking. And then air is, so we use moving air normally here, because we want to cool it a little bit um, less quickly but we tend not to gain the huge increases in hardness that we would see. Tempering is another important process. It involves heating a material to a temperature between about 150 and 700 degrees, depending on the desired properties, holding it and then cooling it in still air. The main goal is to reduce brittleness while maintaining acceptable levels of hardness. This makes the material more durable and less prone to cracking. Finally, we have solution heat treatment. This process is used to enhance properties of alloys like aluminium and stainless steels. By heating the alloy to a high temperature, typically between 450 degrees on the side like aluminium, up to 1,100, 1,200 degrees for stainless steel, holding it and then rapidly cooling it, we can improve its strength, hardness and corrosion resistance. And then things like stainless steel, using a solution heat treat, will desensitize stainless steels which are susceptible to weld decay. So you might be wondering why still air is used in some of these processes like tempering and normalizing. Well, cooling in still air allows for a more controlled and uniform rate of cooling compared to other methods like the fast method of quenching in water or a slightly slower version than oil. This helps to prevent thermal shock 
which can cause cracking or distortion. Additionally, still air ensures that the metal cools at a rate that is maintainable to the desired mechanical properties, such as the toughness and ductility requirements. So thank you for joining me for that video. And if you would like to learn more, remember to subscribe here. But if you want to learn your next bit of welding technology, that's this video here that's appearing on your screen. And as always, stay safe and best of luck with your studies.